In this video, we continue to lay the groundwork for probability by defining intersections, union, disjoint, and complement. So first, let's start with intersection and unit, union. Um, so first, we need to start with a couple of events that are defined on the same subset S. So we're going to have these two events, and we'll call one of them A and one of them B. So if we want to look at the intersection of A and B, then we look at all the events that are in both A and B. So we're looking at what they have in common. Then we're looking at the union. The union is anything that's in A and or B. So we hit everything that's in A and everything that's in B. So that shaded area here represents the intersection and this shaded area represents the union. So that's our visualization. Let's look at an example. So let's have our example be that we roll a six-sided die. So first, the sample space. The sample space is one, two, three, four, five, six, because we could roll a one, we could roll a two, and so on. Now let's define a couple of events. So let's have A be the event that you roll an even. So then A is the set two, four, and six. In other words, we're just looking at this list of numbers and seeing which ones are even. Then let's have B be the event that we roll a number greater than or equal to 2. So we look at these elements here, and we see which ones are greater than or equal to 2. Obviously, 1 is not greater than 2, but 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 are greater than or equal to 2. So B is the set 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right, so if we have A intersect B, we need to see which elements are in both A and B. So if we start with 2, we can see 2 is in both of these. 3 is only in B, so 3 is not in the intersection. 4 is in both of these, so it is in the intersection. 6 is in both of these, so it is in the intersection. But 5 is not in both, so it is not in the intersection. So A intersect B is 2, 4, 6, the common elements. Then for A union B, we just take all of the elements in A and all of the elements in B, and we just list each one one time. So we could start with B, or we could start with A. It doesn't really matter. If we start with B, then we have 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And then if we look to see, well, what's in A that wasn't in B so that we can make sure to list that too? In this case, we have nothing more to list. All right, so that's intersection and union. Next, we're going to look at disjoint. Another word for this, or a phrase for this, is mutually exclusive. So two events are disjoint if they have no common outcome. So if we say that A is an event in S and B is an event in S, then we would say that A intersect B is the empty set if and only if A and B are disjoint. So they have no common outcomes. So an easy example of this, you have your six-sided die. A could be you roll an even, B could be you roll an odd, then A and B would definitely be disjoint because you cannot roll an even and an odd in the same roll, just by definition of even and odd. Finally, we have the definition complement. So if we have A is an event in S, then A complement, written A with a superscript C, is a set of all outcomes that are not in S. So what we need to do is look at S and take out all of it that is A, so we're just left with what is not in A. So for example, if this larger rectangle is S and the circle is A, then everything that is S and not A is shaded in there. So the shaded area there represents A complement. Um, just for one more example, if A is rolling even, then a complement is roll and odd. All right, so those are our definitions. Next, if we want to have some fun, we could combine definitions, combine operations, or we could use two or more events. All right, so in our first example here, we have A intersect B union C. So here I've drawn our sample space as this larger rectangle, and I've split the sample
sample space up so that this left, this piece of the rectangle here is A, and then over here is A complement. And then this larger, this top um, oval is B, and the bottom oval is C. So if we want to take A intersect B union C, then we need to look at anything that's in B or C, B and or C, and is also in A. So we are looking at A intersect B combined with A intersect C. So that is these two shaded areas there. All right, another fun example, A complement intersect B complement. Again, I have this rectangle here to represent the sample space, the circle A, the circle B to denote the set A and the set B. Um, if we were looking at A complement, that's everything that's not in A, and then B complement is everything that's not in B, and so A complement intersect B complement is going to be everything that is both not in A and not in B. So we've shaded the area that is A complement intersect B complement. All right, so those are some visual examples. If we want to have an example that is less visual, we could look at um, A1 is the set 0, 1, A2 is the set 1, 2, A3 is the set 2, 3. So we have these um, little pieces from the number line. Then A1, union A2, union A3, we just know we need to combine A1, A2, A3. So since A1 covers 0 to 1, A2 covers 1 to 2, A3 covers 2 to 3, then this union here would be the set 0 to 3. And of course, if we looked at the intersection of these three, they have nothing in common. So we would be left with the empty set. All right, one more fun example. If we want to look at the complement of A intersect B, it helps to think of this going from inside to outside. So if we first look at A intersect B, what does that look like? Well, we know that A intersect B is everything that they have in common. So if we're looking at everything that's in S that is not in A intersect B, then we're left with the shaded area there, which is the complement of this picture. All right, so those are our definitions, intersection, union, disjoint, and complement. So complement is um, an operation, intersection, union, those are operations, and then disjoint is just one way to characterize special sets that have nothing in common when we use the intersection operation.